Now, you had spoke a little bit earlier um, about reaching out to Dr. Matula Shakur, you know, writing them and stuff like that. But uh, you actually you got an opportunity to to meet with him. If you could talk about what was that like, because he's like he's been like a like a mythical figure in our community for so long because he's been a political prisoner. But also he's Tupac's father. He's Mo Prime's father. You know, these are some of our heroes. Um, what was that like? And, and just coming from Canada, you was just learning about him. If you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I, I had when I first wrote him, I wrote to him. Um, you know, and told him how I was friends with Mario Wexu or how Mario Wexu was my acupuncturist. So right away he responded and then we started to correspond and uh, it was, I made an application and I think it was at the right time in history because I know people later who've tried to visit him weren't able to. So I think I was, I was lucky to be able to get on the visitation list. So I just started visiting him. It was easy because I was going to California a lot for another project. And it's hard to say, like it was kind of you know stressful the first, it was nerve, I would, you know, it was I was kind of nervous the first time because I had never been in um, a maximum prison like that. But you know, seeing Matulu, like he's just he's such an amazing um, you know, warm, awesome person. And um I guess I was fortunate to be able to visit him many times, but to spend a lot of, you know, a lot of hours with him because once you kind of get the way the visitation works is like when you get there, it's such a, they make it so difficult to visit people. So once you're there, you just stay for the whole day. And then um, as the years went on, it became harder and harder to visit him. Like, like they're the, they, they, they started to um it did it did actually become harder and harder and um they also the the bureau of prisons never granted me access to interview him which you know we asked many times but you know I, so unfortunately i was never able to actually interview him directly for this project but i was able to consult with him and kind of like tell him um you know where i was at and he was uh, get his feedback as much as I could. And, um, yeah, so it, it's, it was like a long time. And then, you know, mostly like meeting his son, Mo Prem and daughter-in-law Talia, they were kind of his eyes and ears, like to check out my work. And, um, so I worked quite closely with Mo and Talia in that way. So, Okay, that's cool. Big shout out to Mo Prem. Um, and I can ask you this: Maybe you spoke on it already, but what was your your like your biggest challenge in trying to you know uh, turn this vision into a documentary? Um, I mean, it took a very long time. I think um, getting people's trust, uh, meeting people, trying to make Matulu the heart of the film without having access to interview him that was a huge challenge because i really wanted to keep find a way to structure the story so that dr shakur was still like the heart of the film the documentary even though we had very we had no access to him directly luckily over the years i was able to track down some archives that some other filmmakers and journalists were able to do earlier like in the 90s i think in the 80s when it was easier so you know, that was, I guess, that finding archives, um, there was there was a lot of challenges, but, you know, everyone, and it changed, because originally Dr. Shkor was supposed to be released in 2016, so at the beginning, the film, the documentary is going to be more cinema verite with him reuniting with Mario, and uh, it was going to be a whole different film, and then when he didn't get released, it became a different sort of call to action, there was a different urgency, to like provide a narrative uh, to who Dr. Shakur was. So it did evolve in that way as well. Okay, okay. I mean, you guys, you did a phenomenal job. Uh, it's, it's a great documentary. I got to commend you again. Um, now I can ask you now, you, um, unfortunately, uh, Matula Shakur, he passed away recently, but you did, uh, he did finally get released and you got a chance to meet with him. 
on the outside. Um, if you could just talk about that a little bit, what, what was that experience like? Yeah, I mean, it was amazing. Um, it was kind of surreal to finally, it, and it's so great that he was able to move to Los Angeles and live with his son and to be around all his uh, family and friends. And then we were able to have a screening with Dr. Shakur present in Los Angeles, which was a really incredible, amazing experience. There was a lot of people that showed up um, to, to watch the film that took the microphone. And there was this one man who told Dr. Shakur that he had gone to the Lincoln Detox in the 70s for treatment and now is like a professor at UCLA. Like there was just these amazing stories that, you know, people that had just heard about that Dr. Shakur was going to be there and that showed up. So it was a really, really beautiful to be able to see that, to experience that with, with Dr. Shakur and for him to see that kind of, to see his leg, like to understand the reach of his legacy, which I'm not sure if he really understood. Um, like that was like more of a glimpse because I don't know how much he understood how, how wide, like how, how much people he's influenced and how much, how many people he's united and, you know, so that was really great. Um, it's just sad that he wasn't here longer, of course, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, definitely. You're right. Um, he planted some major seeds. And I guess uh, maybe you could speak to that a little bit because it seemed like what they were fighting against the Young Lords and the Panthers um, in terms of the drugs, you know, the, the opioids, the pills and stuff. You have people today who have children or family, relatives, people they love and they care about. And, and it's a lot of parallels. So, you know, how do you feel like your film can can be a tool or informative and, and be, a, you know, applied to today's situations? Well, I know um, when I started researching the film, at one point I had the statistic that there was about 10,000 uh, 10, people in the around the globe who've been trained to do the five point ear acupuncture protocol. And since the documentary has been available, Juan Cortez and Walter Bosque who are in Harlem have done so many trainings. A lot of people have, who already work in harm reduction or public health or just wanna help you know, their, their community um, have reached out also to Dr. Kakai Patterson to, to learn the protocol. So that's really good. Like people are, um, you know, like the, 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 the protocol has been used in prisons. It was also employed after 9-11, a group of uh, practitioners went to treat first responders for trauma with the five point ear acupuncture protocol. And after hurricane um, Katrina after, actually I'm not sure, I think, I'm, I don't wanna be quoted if I'm wrong about hurricane Katrina, but I know in Puerto Rico, um, people went to treat people with the five point acupuncture protocol for trauma. So it's really, people are using it um, more and more and it's a, and more people are trying to learn it so they can help people, not like in a professional way, just in a community way, you know, in a community healing way. It takes about two weeks to learn and it's, you know, it's very effective. So I think um, the film, the documentary does a good job in introducing that protocol to people so that's great and I think you know while um the two years you know since it was released it helped to spread awareness around Dr. Shakur's incarceration of course you know people have been working tirelessly for decades to help Dr. Shakur get released so um which is very sad because there are so many people incarcerated who don't have the same resources and just even with all these resources and people, it still took like way too long, you know, like, so it's, it's, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now for the viewers that haven't seen the film, you know, um, where can they find it and how can they show you support? What's the best place for them to go to? Um, well, it's it's on, it depends which country, like I know in the US, it's on in certain places in Europe, the, 
documentary should be available on YouTube for free. It's not in Canada. I'm not sure um, about where you're at, if it's there. Uh, it's it's also on Apple, like on iTunes and Amazon, I think. It's around, you know, it's, it's out there. And if anybody ever has a problem finding it, they could reach out at dopeisdeath.com, which also has the, okay. the there's, there's a four part podcast as well. Wow. Okay. Okay. I'm sure you're definitely. I can't hear you. Okay, I can't hear you, but thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I can't hear you any longer, but thank you very much. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, now I can hear you. I'm so sorry, I could not hear you, but now I can. Okay, you can. I can hear Hold you. Hold on one now. second, you can hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. let me fix my screen. Oh, okay, uh, I edited it out. Uh, I think what I wanted to ask you was this, um, do you have any upcoming projects that you're working on films, you know, you mentioned the podcast or anything else. Um, I do, but I, I can't talk about it because there's an active investigation, but there is a project coming out. So there, I'm working on a new documentary. So. Okay. Okay. Wow. Um, Okay, now, uh, I guess this is the last thing. Um, you had mentioned that you have two other projects. Are they on the website or YouTube or another um, place where people yeah. can check those out as well? Um, there's a documentary called Inside Lara Rocks, which was my first documentary about a woman from Montreal who contracted HIV in the porn industry in Los Angeles in 2005. And then the second documentary is called Deprogrammed, and it's about this infamous cult deprogrammer from the US named Ted, pa Ted Patrick, who during the 70s, parents could hire him to kidnap their children from religious cults and deprogram them or de-radicalize them. So it's a very critical documentary about this practice. So they're both available at, like on different platforms. I think uh, Inside Lara Rocks is on 2B, which is for free. Oh, okay. Wow. I'm going to have to check those out. That, that sounds very, very interesting. Um, I just want to thank you again for coming on the platform. Uh, thank you for your contribution to history. The documentary is amazing. Uh, please continue to make more. Uh, keep up the great work. Um, I want to thank the viewers for tuning in. Uh, it's been a phenomenal episode. Thank you so much. Um, so until next time, family, uh, we out. Taye speaks. Peace. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is great.